Hey guys, welcome back to Ultra Precision Technologies. And in this video today, we're doing kind of like a little bit of a part two thing on this NZXT H1 server that I managed to fit five full-size three and a half inch hard drives in. If you haven't seen that video yet, you won't really know what I'm talking about here today maybe. So you can just click up here on this card and that will link you to the first video. So we need this, we need this guy to fit onto here. The reason why that doesn't happen is twofold. One, this hard drive was sticking up a little bit too much and uh, I showed the reason why in the last video. So I have some reprinted upper drive brackets here that should lower the height of this bracket. I'm really hoping it fits and we can slide this panel on. And the second issue was the whole fiasco that required me to use this mining splitter in order to get it to boot properly without a graphics card in installed or whatever else. So the second part of what we're gonna do is swap out the MSI B450 board that's in this with this Asus ROG Strix Z370 gaming board I had. Uh, also an ITX board, so it's gonna fit in this case. Uh, however, th this board only has a slot for one M.2 drive. This can fit two, which means I could do um, a mirrored cache for just better redundancy. So the very first thing I wanna do, I think, is just find out if I swap out these upper brackets, if it's gonna allow me to fit the side panel on the way I'm hoping it will. So in order to take out the top drives, we first have to remove the bottom drives, of course. And now we're free to get access to these screws to take these guys out. Okay, that wasn't so bad. These are the feet that we have to change out. Well, those are it's definitely fitting tighter. I can hardly even get the freaking thing in here. Okay, those are in. It's definitely sitting a lot tighter, I guess, moment of truth. Please fit. It fits. Guess I need to take the locking panel off first if I want it to sit all the way down. Oh, it fits. Nice. Okay, well that's really good news. Because there was, I couldn't do anything else. If that, this bracket didn't fit the drives in it just would have meant that the drives are just too thick and they just no matter what i did it wouldn't fit there so it's, it's still a little tight i think it's touching just a little bit but considering i'm not going to be taking this cover off and on a bunch i think it's fine i don't even see any scratches on the sticker or anything so i'm fine with that uh, it's also worth noting i guess that you could take off this dust cover and that would give you a little bit more clearance for this to fit a little nicer yeah, now it's it's got plenty of room. It's probably got a, well, it's got the thickness of this dust cover of room basically now. And because there's no intake fans pulling air into this, besides on this side, where there's the all-in-one radiator for the CPU cooler, really I think you only need to keep the dust cover on this side because it covers the intake for the radiator for the AIO. Really, I think I'm gonna leave this back dust cover off just for a little more clearance for this hard drive just because I don't wanna run into it vibrating or rattling against the side panel. Okay, so now I have to swap out the motherboard, which in a very tiny configuration like this is always a little challenging. Pull the RAM out for a little more clearance. Got to unplug the USB. Okay, out with the old and in with the new. We will unbox the Z370i here real quick and look at some comparisons between the AMD board and this one that we're replacing. This back plate is a little more blacked out. But I do like how this one looks a little bit better. They both have four internal SATA ports. So that is the same. With the Intel board, I will get to use my i5, which has built-in like integrated graphics. The Intel board also has one M.2 slot under this heatsink here, as well as an additional one on the back. Whereas this board, uh, this is just a chipset heatsink, and then it has the one M.2 drive on the back, so a little more limited. For now, I just wanna get this thing reassembled and see if my Unraid install is broken. I'm very curious about that. 
Now, I don't have any cast drives for this right now. And also in my testing, cast drives didn't really make a ton of sense for me at this time because my networking is such a mess. So I will definitely be upgrading my networking a little bit and um, focusing a little bit on that in the future. So get subscribed if that sort of thing uh, interests you. So as far as the connectors being in the same place, there's some things that are similar. This CPU power connector uh, will be in a similar spot. This 24 pin connector, yeah, it's pretty much in the same spot. And this board also has USB type C, which the AMD board did not have. So I will have to unravel this USB type C connector right here. All right, I'm just gonna be building this for a minute. Oh, okay, most of the cable management is done now. I did end up having to redo most of it, but that's all right. I'm gonna install the CPU. Now, if I remember correctly, the other kind of interesting thing about this i5 is that this is the highest clocking uh, chip I was ever able to push. Um, I was running 5.3 uh, gigahertz overclocked on this chip for about a year and then after a year it became unstable but I do believe that this this is actually looking for any sign of it but I'm pretty sure this chip is running liquid metal on it so that's interesting if I am recalling that correctly clean up the gobs of thermal paste on here and for those of you wondering what we like to run around here good old GD900 okay now to find the correct brackets for the Intel Okay, so now our board's back installed. So we should be good to plug in all the hard drives next. Oh, it's this bundle here it's hitting. Oh, <laughs> there's no RAM in this computer yet. All right, let's put the RAM in. <laughs> Oh wow, putting the sticks in backwards and everything today. Okay, well, it's all in. That is a tight fit if I've ever seen one. Well, it's closed. So let's put this bottom drive tray back in. Let's get a monitor and stuff and see what happens. Hmm, why I get nothing. To the internet. Okay guys, so it's the next day, actually it's the next night, um, I have the Z370 board here. Uh, as you'll notice, it is out of the server. The server is sitting off to the side over here. I could not get this board to boot. I pulled it out. I put it in a test bench setup, mounted a stock Intel cooler to it, tried different power supply, three different sets of RAM, and it just won't boot. The onboard boot LEDs, uh, CPU passes, DRAM passes, and then the VGA light never comes on. So now I'm wondering if I have an issue with this chip or do I have an issue with this board? So I actually do have some other eighth and ninth gen parts on hand. They're currently running my old server. So I'm gonna go grab that server, tear it apart and do some swappy swappy to try to isolate if this board is no good or if this chip somehow died. Now this thing is absolutely filthy. This was only ever supposed to be used as a temporary server, but uh, long story short, it's been in deployment for two years. 
So now with absolutely no server up whatsoever, I really want to get this tested and put back together as fast as possible. Check one last time for any bent pins or anything. And while this is potentially trying to figure itself out, I'm gonna put the i5 in this board and see if it turns on. All right, there we go. So this chip clearly works. So this board, the Z370 board died, I guess. Okay, so I just made the decision. I'm not gonna bother checking out my local marketplace or anything like that. I just want this thing to be up and running and built. So I'm gonna go ahead and reuse my AM4 MSI board. And I, I just ordered a Ryzen 5 4650G. That's like the pro APU from AMD that has the onboard graphics. So I will be able to use the onboard graphics port on this board. So that CPU will be here tomorrow. And when it arrives, I'm going to fully get it running on a test bench first because I do not want to tear this thing apart again. I can't really do anything else until that chip arrives tomorrow. So I guess I will see you tomorrow when the new chip arrives. All right guys, so it's the next next day. So day three, I have a package from Amazon here. This should be my CPU. I am going to bench test this this time and hopefully verify it's all working before I shove it back into that case. Or I don't know if I mentioned, but the pro moniker in the 4650G um, will allow us to support ECC in the future if I change the board to a board that supports ECC. Well, this is a uh, this is a really good sign. And now let's try to hook up a hard drive to this with the SATA card and see if it still posts. OK, we're booted into this random hard drive, so I'm happy enough with that for this test. I got to put this back in here again, so. Um, why is it stuck on VGA? <sighs> okay, so it's the fourth day now, and uh, not much to look at, but um, Unraid is up and running. In full transparency, I couldn't get the fifth hard drive to like work in this with the hardware I have. After talking it over with Tristan last night a little bit, um, I think I have a way that I can add the fifth hard drive basically by using uh, an M.2 to um, like internal SATA connector adapter card. But for now, I'm just going to run the four disks. That gives me 12 terabytes of storage for now. Remember, originally when I started this upgrade, I only had a one terabyte storage server. So we're still 12 times more storage and five disks is not off the table. Um, they're all still physically installed in here. I just have the fifth disk unplugged for now. So right now, Unraid is rebuilding the parity disk with only four drives installed. All the drives are getting hit a little bit with some load, uh, and the highest temperatures I've seen in this thing so far is about 46 uh, C. That's the hottest disk. So even with no like active cooling inside of it, you know it's warm. I can feel it's warm around the top here all the way, but everything seems to be fine. I guess we'll see as time goes on. So overall, I'm still super happy with how this turned out. I love the look of it once I put the side panels back on. This is, thing is like the furthest thing from an eyesore could go in any room in my house. I may actually end up putting it over there in the back corner and do some nice cable management just to remind myself that it's not in its final form and I need to come back and revisit it at some point. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I will post these uh, brackets for sale on my store, which the link will be in the description for those. So if you have an NZXT H1 version one, or you find like a used version one specifically, very important, these brackets will not fit the version two, and you wanna build a little home NAS in one of these, you can do that by all means. The brackets are 100% functional. If you've made it to the end of this video and you still haven't seen part one of fitting five hard drives in an NZXT H1, it'll be linked here for you at the end, so go watch that video now. Make sure to hit subscribe button so you can see when I drop a new video, and I hope to see you in the next one soon.